Welcome back to part two of day one of significance tests um, for means. And so big ideas to pull out from what we did today over in the experience where we're trying to see do AP students actually get enough sleep. Um, make sure that you have the conditions right. So you need to have them random. You need to hit the 10% rule. And you need to make sure that you're checking for normality. Remember, that's either coming from population as being normal. You have the central limit theorem. Or when you look at your sample, there's no strong skew or outliers. If any of those work, then you can go ahead and proceed with the fact that we can go ahead and use the normal um, sample and distribution methods. Test statistic and p-values. So for here, there is my graph. Probably could have just done it all at once. So again, our graph is going to be a T with the degrees of freedom. We don't have to say it's a normal curve. It's going to be a T curve. Here is a very familiar looking T score. Um, and again, very much like our Z score, but we're doing it with T's because we're going to have to deal with degrees of freedom. And then up here for, for your p-value, you can either use table B. And again, remember, it tells you um, you're going to be looking in how many degrees of freedom you have, et cetera, et cetera. And then, or, or you can use TCDF, which is you're going to use your lower T value, your upper T value, and then how many degrees of freedom that you have. All right. So for your check your understanding, feel free to pause this in a second, but we're going through and trying to see if U.S. drivers do actually spend 51 minutes on the road like they're talking about. Um, and so over here, they find that sample of 75 drivers, 46.4 um, minutes, standard deviation of 18.8 minutes. So, oh, and it does say random sample of 75 drivers. So does this convincing evidence that the mean time for all U.S. drivers is actually less than 51 minutes? And you're going to use an alpha value of 1%. So go ahead and hit pause, run through this, come on back and check as we go. So parameter mean is the true mean time behind the wheel for US drivers. Our statistic is up here. I sometimes like to list out everything here because that way I don't have to go hunting back in the problem for it. Just a thought. Um, hypothesis. So the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, nothing's changing. We're assuming what is stated is true, that the null hypothesis that the mean is actually 51 minutes. The alternative hypothesis we state is going to be less than 51 minutes. So that is our alternative hypothesis there. And our alpha level is 1% because they told us that. Um, name of a procedure is going to be a one sample t-test for means. And again, very similar naming structure to what we've been doing before. How many samples, what type of test, and then are you doing it for means or proportions? For the conditions like we talked above, random, it says random sample of 75. Somebody asked, should I say, should I actually quote it or should I say state it above? Quoting it's probably your safer bet. Um, and again, for you know two extra seconds of time, I think that's fine. If you need to practice writing so that your hand doesn't get tired, that wouldn't be bad either. Um, 75 is definitely less than one-tenth of all U.S. drivers, and 75 is greater than 30, so we can use the central limit theorem so we don't have to worry about normality. So a couple of things here. So here's my graph. I have a t-test. There's my degrees of freedom, 74. Remember, that's always one less than our sample size. The test statistics, stat minus parameter divided by standard deviation. There is the same formula that I had above for the T statistic. When I plug everything in and get out, I get a negative 2.12. So again, in my head, I'm going to say, Ooh, this is going to be pretty close. Just remember, anything over 2 generally is kind of in our significance wheelhouse. So if I check over here, I get negative 2.12. I throw it into my calculator, TCDF, label out all the different parts, and I get 0 0.019. So about 2% chance of what I'm seeing is actually happening. Now, Remember, our alpha value is 1%. And we're going to talk about changing that changing thing a little bit tomorrow. But here's my conclusion. Now, two parts here. Remember, um, we are going to go through, and this part here is going to be my interpret. So you're going to say, what did we find? And then this part over here is kind of our conclusion. Um, so you need both parts. Assuming that the mean amount of time spent behind the wheel is 51 minutes, there is a 0 0.0109 probability of getting a sample means of 46.4 minutes or less, purely by chance. Since that value, 0 0.019, is greater than our alpha value of 0 0.01, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and do not have convincing evidence that the time spent behind the wheel for U.S. drivers is less than 51 minutes. Okay, so again, this sometimes will seem really, really wordy, but again, remember, this is kind of your summary statement. If you like doing um, mock trials or something, this is your closing argument. This is why you're saying all this evidence is pointing to this has to be the conclusion. All right. 
So tomorrow we're going to formalize this with all four steps for doing significance tests for means. We're also going to talk about the link between significance tests and confidence intervals. And then probably take a quiz after that. And then we'll go on to difference of means and means of differences. So lots to look forward to. We'll talk to you soon.